health experts had previously warned about pandemic. The number of swine cases continues to climb, with around 6,300 throughout 33 countries. New cases arose in Canada, China, Hong Kong, United States, and United Kingdom. Three schools in Inverclyde, UK, were closed for seven days due to the likelihood of swine flu diagnosis in several of their young students. In a study published in 2006, the US-based National Institute of Health had warned that intensive livestock operations could lead to a pandemic. The study stated that domestic animals, especially poultry or swine, in confined animal feeding operations or CAFOs are amplifiers for new strains of influenza and that the human workers at the facilities become bridges carrying the disease to the general population. As U.S. biologist Dr. Robert G. Wall stated in an interview with the German political magazine Report Minds, it's not H1N1 that we have to worry about, but rather the process that creates an extremely virulent virus out of the less contagious flu virus. And this process is greatly accelerated by cramming together hundreds of thousands of chickens or pigs. In an interview with Supreme Master Television, Professor of Medicine Dr. Jose Maria Peña at the University Otomona de Madrid, Spain, reminded us that mad cow disease also evolved from animal agriculture operations. Pero ya tenemos una experiencia para recordar que eh, cuando tuvimos la, la, las enfermedades por priones, la enfermedad de las vacas locas, fue el cambio de uh, uh, alimentación de las, del animal estabulado utilizando carcasas de ovejas, lo que precipitó que traspasara de una especie a otra y nosotros la cogiéramos a través de las vacas. ¿no? Entonces la gente ya es muy consciente de que determinadas formas de producción de alimentos Sin, uh, puede suponer un riesgo uh, desde el punto de vista de enfermedades infecciosas. Dr. Peña also addressed the risks inherent in over-medicating animals with antibiotics, which could lead to antibiotic-resistant infections. He hablado con amigos veterinarios, he intentado buscar información y no he encontrado una explicación científica válida y razonable de cuál es el beneficio de usar antibióticos en la crianza de animales. Ignoro el beneficio, desde lo económico debe serlo porque desde luego resulta rentable, ¿no? pero uh, el inconveniente es obvio, compartimos bacterias con muchísimas otras especies de mamíferos o, o, o aves, eh, si esas bacterias están expuestas a antibióticos acabarán mutando siendo resistentes y nos pasa, llegarán a nosotros. Our heartfelt thanks to Drs. Pena and Wallace for their concern and caution of the health risks posed by factory farming practices. May our expanding awareness of factors such as these motivate a worldwide transition to the hygienic plant-based diet that brings peace to the animals as well as ourselves.